I'd like to hear from active police in the United States about all the riot control training that is going on on record. I would like to hear from active duty military about riot control preparations, about the litmus test, will you confiscate guns for American citizens? We've had Navy SEALs on the show. We have had basically uh, military police with video of them being told they're under FEMA command and that gun confiscation may happen if Obama suspends the Constitution. Uh, that is the type of information that we have. And we separately, uh, on top of that, we separately have all of our articles dealing with the purging of the top military brass, like retired Army Major General Patrick Brady, recipient of the U.S. military's highest decoration, the Medal of Honor, uh, said that top officers that he's talked to say President Obama's agenda is decimating the morale of the U.S. ranks to the point where members no longer feel prepared to fight or to have the desire to win. There's no doubt he, Obama, is on tent on emaciating the military and will fire anyone who disagrees with him. Over such issues as homosexuals, women in foxholes, the Obama sequester, Brady told World Net Daily. They are purging everyone, and if you want to keep your job, just keep your mouth shut, one source told World Net Daily. Not only are military service members uh, demoralizing the ranks, overall readiness being reduced by the Obama administration, it goes through that. Retired Army uh, Lieutenant General William G. Jerry Boykin, who was with Delta Force, well, he founded Delta Force, and later Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence under President Bush, says it's worrying that four-star generals are being retired at the rate that has occurred under Obama, and they're being fired. Over the past three years, it's unprecedented for the number of four-star generals to be relieved of duty and it not necessarily uh, relieved for cause, Boykin said. I believe there is a purging of the military. He said the problem is worse than we have ever seen. Yeah, that's that's undoubted. And, and folks, we know that, that AP reported that they were told not to report this information, that it had to be leaked to them, and that Obama does not want people knowing this is going on. So I want to hear from... People in the Department of Defense, civilians, active duty military officers, recently out officers, military police, and active police. Because if you study history, this is unprecedented what's happening. This is a big, big deal. And, and it's getting crazier and crazier. And they're already using the IRS to persecute the Tea Party, Christians, mainline groups. We already have all the new army manuals, bad-mouthing the founding fathers, uh, all of the... Founding father type material is being t uh, taken off the uniforms. Uh, they're, you know, talking about getting rid of George Washington on the perp uh, on the Purple Heart. Uh, I mean, that's the type of stuff that's happening. They're 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 getting the "Don't Tread on Me" off the Navy uniforms. There it is, CBS News. Army vet mother banned. Yeah, I saw that this morning from daughter's school for posting concealed weapons permit on Facebook. And now, now imagine the Army vet mother on her own Facebook just post her concealed carry permit to show it to somebody that's totally legal and lawful, and then they're banned from the school. Oh, yeah, I mean, if your dad's in the Marines and you bring a photo of your dad with his sidearm on, that was a case, the kid is kicked out for a photo of a gun. This is the authoritarianism, and you think, oh, these people are idiots. They're not idiots. It's upheld. They kicked a kid out of school for having a Nerf gun in his backyard playing tag. A neighbor called the school. The school's meant to run your life. It's the takeover arm in their own documents. So we're going to uh, go to break and come back with uh, your phone calls at 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And we will get you up and on the air. I want to hear... What you have to say about uh, the officers being purged out of the military, uh, what the military thinks about this. And, and, of course, it's meant to ruin the military to put women in frontline combat. Nobody does that. Of course, it's going to cause incredible problems and fraternization. Um, of course, uh, women, they're having to lower the standards. I can't carry some 70-pound pack on 20-mile runs. I mean, I, I couldn't carry a 70-pound pack. Uh, I couldn't run a mile. Unless I had to, like, save my family or something. I mean, I could jog like three, four miles. I'm not, I mean, imagine that. Imagine a woman carrying an average woman, and they're going to, they're already lowering the standards. Again, it's not about equality, folks. It's about wrecking institutions, wrecking 
The name mother and father has been banned in France in government documents. Now they're banning it in the U.S. The federal government tells its employees, don't invite married couples, you know, saying, oh, we're going to have a couples party. That's hurtful. See, it, it, it's not about inclusion. It's about exclusion of us. It's about discrimination against men, against women, against families. There it is. France bans the words mother and father. Are we choosing our own destiny, or has it been pre-selected for us? As we've moved through history, every great leader has had to understand the potential of information. Billions of dollars have been spent privately and publicly looking at how to tap into your psyche. From compulsory state education to the Hollywood media brainwashing machine, we are kept in perpetual bondage to the ideas that shape our actions. When somebody obscures that feedback loop between you observing and testing it out and verifying it, they can take total control of your awareness. All of this is happening so fast, you need to be ahead of the game. How to engineer the opinion of the American people so that they would not only endorse but demand a war. Right oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. State of mind, because there's a war on for your mind. Get your copy of State of Mind the movie at InfoWars.com. And remember, every order at InfoWarsStore.com receives a free citizen rulebook. The show has a bigger audience than it's ever had. But we've had a bunch of people call in that are retired, Department of Defense, or out of the military, wanting to comment about the purge. On any given day, with it, when not even on subject, military calls in to talk about the purge. Uh, but we've not gotten any calls from active duty military or police talking about preparations for riot control, talking about preparations for economic collapse. I mean, we've got all the documents. In fact, here are some of the articles. DHS publicly denies preparation for riots, civil unrest, flip-flop while admitting equipment and armed guards for, quote, civil disturbances. Federal agency claims otherwise. Remember the TSA would, like, be videotaped hundreds of times, sticking their hands in the pants? And they would say, we don't do that. That's a lie. Responding to an inquiry by the International Business Times regarding the recent uh, purchase of riot control equipment that we broke, that Drudge carried, pepper spray launchers, pepper spray projectiles, as well as the hiring of armed guards with top secret security clearances, I should add, to protect government buildings, the DHS dismissed reports primarily from InfoWars, which such activity was related to preparations for domestic disorder. These reports are false. The reference Federal Protective Services acquisition request, including automatic uh, pepper spray guns, uh, requested for protective security officers will replace an existing contract due to expire November 2014, which provides security and screening within federal facilities throughout the upstate New York area. So they used one of many examples. And, and you heard them. There's also no drones over America, even though there are. And there's no thimerosal in the vaccines, even though there are. It just goes on and on. So... There's all these admissions, even in mainstream state-run media, uh, that that this is going on, and they're busy telling us it's not. So uh, there was an article in the Fort Hood paper last week we wrote about where they were admitting it was for domestic unrest. I mean, this is all over the news. So I'd like to hear from police, military, active duty, on the purge, on the civil unrest uh, buildup. What do you make of this latest lie? And uh, I've seen a lot of calls coming in there, but none of them are calling in. Uh, on the specific of that. So again, uh, I'm going to give out the toll-free number, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. But first, while those calls are coming in, I wanted to play a New World Order clip that I only played part of in the first hour uh, today that was just a few clips put together by my crew. We could put hours of these out. In fact, I think it was the extra from uh, Fabled Enemies. No, it was the next Burmese film we produced. Um, where we just had hours, hours, if we wanted to use it all, of them announcing global government, new world order, and defining the current new world order definition as a planetary corporate government. That is above the law. So I want to play this clip and then we'll uh, come back 
and go to your phone calls. Again, the toll-free number, and we'll also open it up for folks that want to talk about Obamacare or any other news, uh, but we'll try to get those military calls in. 800-259-9231. And just open the phones entirely up there. So we do have some military calls coming, and we'll go to those, then the other calls. But right now, they blamed us a few days ago and yesterday that I believe in the New World Order. I made that up. Uh, and this imaginary thing made the guy reportedly go shoot the TSA people, shooting and wounding six, killing one. Folks, the New World Order is what they call the new global order. of. The, when they use the term New World Order, they mean a new global power structure run by them. Planetary government is what their definition of it means in all the big white papers. Uh, but the, they'll still act like that no one's even using this term. I mean, for over a decade, the media has said that I'm insane. No one's even using this term. So let's go to that clip. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of... Uh, a world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see a world order in the future with a multipolar world order. I think the new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities and there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. And I strongly believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. New World Order is the headline in the Globe and Mail in Canada. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Of course we are. We are absolutely slaves to central banks. <laughs> We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order. An order in which a credible United Nations the globalists are above the can law. use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It is a big idea. A new world order. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used, I think, only once and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the beginning, order. The beginning of a new international order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of the, of the world. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming